Hello, welcome back to the ECG course. This is chapter four. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the different ECG intervals. Here's that same rhythm we were looking at from uh, chapter three on ECG waves. And we've already identified the uh, P wave, which is that first positive deflection showing us atrial depolarization. Also, the uh, QRS complex, which is that collection of waves following the P wave showing us ventricular depolarization. And then we have, of course, the T wave following that, which is showing us ventricular repolarization. Okay, now we're gonna talk about everything in between. All right, we're gonna talk about all everything that occurs on that isoelectric line. So remember I, I talked about the SA node here, and that's the uh, pacemaker all right, in most healthy individuals, and that causes atrial depolarization, all right, and then that atrial depolarization kind of pauses right about there at the AV node. Well, that pause causes a pause in electrical activity, so you don't see any positive or negative deflection on the EKG. And then we talked about ventricular depolarization, all right, following that, and after ventricular depolarization, you get ventricular repolarization. And there is a slight pause in between those two things. Or there may or may not be, depending on the type of ECG rhythm you're looking at. So here we've labeled everything there is. You have your P wave, which is atrial depolarization. Then you have your PR segment, which is that flat pause right here in between the, uh, QR, or the P wave and the QRS complex. And the PR segment begins the second the P wave, or right where the P wave hits that isoelectric line, and it ends right where you get the first positive or negative deflection following that. Then you have your QRS complex. Then you have your ST segment. The ST segment begins where your QRS complex hits the isoelectric line, and it ends where your T wave begins. Okay, you also have your PR interval. Now, the PR interval is the P wave and the PR segment combined. That, that's our PR interval. And it's important to remember that one. A normal PR interval, PR interval is equal to less than 0 0.20 seconds. 0 0.20 seconds or 200 milliseconds. They both stand for the same thing. That's equal to five small boxes or one large box, one large box. All right, so it's, it's important to remember uh, that the PR interval should be less than 0 0.20 seconds. This example here is actually longer than that. Okay, so if we were measuring this PR interval, we would say that is a lengthened PR interval. And that's usually a sign of a type of heart block, and we'll talk about that later on when we get into the uh, identifying heart blocks. So the two measurements that we've learned to have to remember now are the QRS duration, should be less than 120 milliseconds, which is roughly three small boxes, and the PR interval, which should be less than 200 milliseconds or 0 0.20 seconds. Okay, there's also a couple other intervals that we haven't talked about yet. For example, we have the RR interval, the RR interval. So from one QRS complex to the next, that's called our RR interval. And that's important to, to know because when we're looking for regularity, when we're looking to see if your, your rhythm is regular, you need to measure out your RR intervals. Also, you have your TP segment. So from the end of the T wave, to the beginning of the next P wave, that's your TP segment, TP. So your RR interval is here, RR, and your TP segment is down here. So again, some uh, measurements to remember. QRS duration should be less than 0.12 seconds, which is 120 milliseconds. That's three small boxes. Your PR interval should be less than 0.20 seconds, which is 200 milliseconds. And that's five small boxes, 
or one big box, one large box. Here's just another image showing you those. All right, the, and finally, the one that I haven't mentioned yet is the QT interval. That's going to become more important when we start talking about 12 leads uh, because the QT interval or the normal QT interval will change depending on the heart rate. So we have a formula uh, that we use to determine the normal QT interval. And the most 12 lead monitors already do that formula for you. It's called Bazet's formula, and it gives you the corrected QT interval. So we'll talk about that later on with 12 leads. Uh, but for now, pay attention to the PR interval, the RR interval, uh, and the TP segment, and everything else we mentioned thus far. So, using the RR interval to determine regularity, you're going to want to be able to determine if a rhythm is regularly regular, regularly irregular, or irregularly irregular. Now, what do those all mean? Well, regularly regular just means everything is spaced perfectly apart. So this space here between one QRS complex and the next is going to be the same space over and over and over again. Regularly irregular, well that would be kind of like a pattern. You would have maybe one, two, or three beats together, then you would have a space, and then same thing again, and then a space, and Regularly irregular would say that, well, this space here is the same as this space here, is the same as this space here, and this space here. But you also have a few spaces that don't really match that, but it's a continued pattern. And then irregularly irregular, the bottom one here, well, that would just be erratic. There's no rhyme or reason to the spacing, and it's just constantly an irregular rhythm. Okay, and it's going to be important to be able to identify those. So let's take a look here. So the best way to do this would be to use a set of calipers. Okay, you would use a set of calipers, and I'm going to try to open up my calipers now so I can do that. And there's another way to do it, that it a very easy way. Um, would be to take another EKG strip piece of paper and just measure or draw a line from the first QR com QRS complex to the next and then you would pick up that piece of paper and you would me measure it out comparing to the next one. So you can see with these calipers that I'm using that this rhythm stays very regular. That R to R interval stays very regular throughout so this rhythm would be considered regularly regular. Okay, let's take a look at the next. All right, so I'm gonna, again, this is where you would draw your first line over here on your piece of paper. And you would draw your next line right here. And then you would just take that piece of paper or your calipers and you would just measure out with the next one. And you would see that they pretty much match up all the way through this rhythm. And yeah, you could pretty much eyeball this, or you can count the small boxes or large boxes between the QRS complexes and see if they match up with the next and so on and so forth. There's many different ways to do it. Um, but sometimes, depending on the rate of the rhythm, it could be very difficult to identify regularity. Let's take a look at another one. That last one was also regularly irregular. So we haven't had any irregularities yet. Let's take a look at this one. Well, this one you could probably see right off the bat that this is a big RR interval and then it does not match up. So it's irregular, and it doesn't appear that there's any pattern. This rhythm appears to be irregularly irregular. Okay, so there's no pattern. It's irregularly irregular. Let's take a look at another one. All right, let's match these up here. That looks about the same, so that's regular, regular. And then we have a extra beat that looks a little odd there, so we don't have our QRS complex occur. But the rhythm itself is pretty regular, so the, the underlying rhythm is regularly regular, and then you have what appears to be an ectopic beat. And you're going to learn more about ectopy uh, later on. So this rhythm, if you wanted to 
call it regularly irregular, it wouldn't really be true because it, there's no pattern here. Unless this keeps occurring uh, throughout the rhythm, uh, there's no pattern. So the rhythm itself, the underlying rhythm, is regularly regular. Okay, there's no irregularity except for that single beat there. All right, well, here we have a very fast one, so let's take a look at this one. These are very hard to tell without me actually measuring. It appears that it is very regular. That's going to be important because your treatment is going to depend on you being able to identify and interpret the rhythm accurately. And you can only do that by noting the different rules of the rhythm, such as regularity. So this one is very regular. It is regularly regular. Okay, so that's another one. All right, let's take a look at this one. So I could start here at the R wave there. Let's go to there. Uh, I don't think... Does that match up? Might be a little off, actually. And it definitely skips a beat there. No, that R, R interval is pretty close. So I would say that this one is regularly irregular because this rhythm is going to continue throughout. You have one, two, three beats, and then you have a space, and then you have another one, two, three beats, and then you probably have another space, and then so on and so forth. And you'll see that that kind of fits certain types of rhythms. So that is regularly irregular. So going back here to the first one again, I just kind of want to go over them again. Okay, so this first one here again is regularly regular because all of these match up. So we said it was regularly regular. The next one we also said was regularly regular regularly regular, which is normal. Then we have one that was irregularly irregular. Irregularly irregular. There's no pattern to it. Then we also had another one that we said the underlying rhythm is regularly regular. It's regularly regular and it had an ectopic beat. And we're going to talk about that later on. And we had another regularly regular rhythm that was pretty fast. And then finally, we had one that was regularly irregular. Regularly irregular. Okay, because it has a pattern. And we're going to do that again as we start interpreting rhythms. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about uh, the rate and rhythm specifically. Uh, in the last chapter, in, in chapter 3, we talked about ECG waves. If you want to go back to chapter 3 and, and look that over, click on the left image there. If you want to continue on to chapter 5 and talk about the rates in the rhythms or learn more about that, click on the right image. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in the uh, next video on rate and rhythm. See you next time.